Let's talk about a typical day in the life of a six figure software sales manager. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. I've been a sales leader for quite some time now. I know exactly what it takes to structure your day and your week to set you up for incredible success and to continue to drive great income and a lot of success over time. So when I walk you through what a typical day in the life should look like, for a multi six figure plus SaaS sales leader. So before getting into the structure of the day and the week itself, it's important to unpack actually the core pillars that should really underpin the way that a SaaS leader is really thinking about and structuring uh, their broader plan, their broader go to market plan. So uh, there's something that I created, which I call the pod excellent structure. And that really consists of pipeline, operational and deal excellence. So I just want to touch on each of these cylinders in a little bit more detail. Uh, when you've got these three things combined, you've really got yourself set up for long term, sustainable, incredible success over time. So pipeline excellence, really, this consists of both having a talent pipeline and also uh, pipeline as it relates to revenue itself. So when we say talent, we're talking about hiring. And this is making sure that as a part of your consistent rigor, you're continuing to make sure that you appeal to talent. You're being thoughtful about actually approaching new talent, building your brand to make sure that you consistently have a full talent pipeline. And there's a number of ways to go about maximizing that which I'll talk about in a separate video, but in its uh, core premise, that's what that's all about. The second part is, of course, revenue. And I remember one of my first sales leaders ever once said to me, the saying that Alex, pipeline cures all. You can't outwork a, a bad pipeline. Ultimately, if you've got a salesperson who's got a bad closing ratio or they're struggling, you're struggling with enablement, the best cure you can have for that is having a really rich and full pipeline with tons and tons of opportunities, because even with a bad uh, closing ratio, uh, you can potentially account for that or cure for that if you've got a very solid pipeline. So the first core pillar is having a great both talent pipeline and also a lot of revenue at the top of your funnel. Now, the next thing is operational excellence. And this is really all about, uh, first of all, having a great, exciting, well thought through mission that your team can really get behind. So who are you guys as a team? What do you stand for? And then that helps to really create a foundation around the way that you structure your week and you structure the broader operating rhythm for your team. And when I say POR, that's then your personal operating rhythm. So this is the way that you structure your own day, the way that you structure your own week to, uh, on a personal note, actually outside of your day job to make sure that you continue to have the energy and the vigor that you need to operate at such a fast pace. So to re-summarize that, it's having a broad mission or an exciting dynamic mission for your team that gets them excited that they can get behind. It's then the structure that you have for that team so that they're set up for success. And then it's your personal operating rhythm. What do you do for your morning routine? What do you do for your evening routine to make sure you have the energy and the rigor to sustain over time? The last piece is then deal excellent. So this is really how do you then operate when you're actually driving opportunities and in your deals to make sure that you give yourself the best possible opportunity, give your team the best possible possible opportunity to win all of the deals that they have out there. So this starts with some form of frameworks. Maybe you leverage uh, Medic as your qualification framework, for example, or Bant or Spin Selling, Challenger Sell, whatever the case is, maybe you've created your own. It's what are the frameworks that really give you the best possible, uh, put you in the best possible position to reduce any deal risk and give yourself the best opportunity to win all of the opportunities that are out there. The, the next thing is what I describe as the DNA of the deal. So this is really uh, something that I've created myself, but it's really built on some of the frameworks that I've just spoken about, which really get to the core of what are the fundamental ingredients that we need to understand and unpack to put us in the best possible position to win this book of business. So it's really your form of what are the key ingredients that we need to know, unpack, 
spend time in and invest our uh, uh, mind share in to put us in the best possible position to win. And then reviews, these are really deal reviews. So this is when you're going over with your team, really uh, all of the core fundamentals behind the frameworks and the DNA of a deal to get more eyes on a deal, get more people involved in a deal. Maybe you're bringing solution architects on, maybe you're bringing your VPs on, uh, maybe you're bringing your C-suite on that review so that you can all get multiple eyes on the deal and put yourself in the best possible position to win. So now let's talk about how this then translate into the structure of a multi six figure SaaS sales leaders week. So the way I've always liked to structure this is to break out the week into almost different themes in a way. So your Monday is all about pipeline generation, one to ones and forecasting. So first of all, pipeline generation, of course, is the lifeblood of what we do. So I often like to talk to having this premise of PG Mondays, but it could be uh, different days of the week. I encourage having this early in the week because the earlier that you have it in the week, it then puts you in a position where you can have a little bit more focus around the importance of generating pipeline. It's the first thing you do in any given week. And then it means that as you go throughout the week, you can start to focus more so on execution of the deals themselves. So all big focus on generating pipeline. You can create, you know, spiffs and different themes around uh, that day or power hours, however you want to do it to really create more excitement around what that day is and what that day can look like. You're then also doing your team one-to-ones. And these are often 30 minutes. I typically do them in 20 minutes and really get straight to the point so that you can really drill down with your team. And in a separate video, I'll talk about the structure of an effective one-to-one, but it's really where you're spending time with them to unpack things that are personal and professional, going through with them a good understanding of making sure that you've spent a bit of time on their career, their trajectory, a bit about revenue, spend a little bit of time on deals if there's anything pressing, but then also where you would do your forecasting meeting with your team. So of course, unpacking where they are right now, where they expect to land by the end of the quarter and start to walk through the reasons why. And again, it's a separate video where I'll talk about an effective forecasting meeting. Now, Tuesday to Thursday, this is where it's all about really customers and deal execution. So this is where you're bringing in your deal reviews. This is where you're sitting in on customer meetings and also where you're having meetings that are based around internal alignment. So other departments, whether it's marketing, customer success, other teams within the business so that you can continue to build your brand as an internal stakeholder and also make sure that you created better bridges with other teams. So when your team need that support, you're in a position where you can immediately call on help and alignment from other people within the company. So what I recommend is that, again, you're dedicating most of your time uh, shadowing customer meetings, being in the trenches with your team. And a lot of what we're talking about here is really a structure for first line leaders instead of second line leaders. So when we say first line leaders, we're talking about sales managers, sales directors on the front line, directly managing a field team. Whereas in my position now, I'm a VP where I'm looking after sales managers and sales directors and the way that your week is structured is slightly different to what we're going through now. So the next part is then deal reviews. We spoke a little bit about that earlier. So it's actually having multiple eyes on a deal where you would expect your field seller to come through, produce, in essence, a a templatized document, which walks through the sales framework that you lead on. So if it was medic as a qualification criteria or framework, uh, then you would expect that salesperson to come present where that deal maps against medic. You would then potentially have other people within the business get to observe that and be a part of that deal review. And then you're all collaborating to talk through what could the appropriate next steps be to help to move this deal forward. The next bit is then internal alignment, as I've just spoken about. So this is you in uh, arranging intentional meetings with marketing or customer success or your support teams or whoever else in the company that in some way should be supportive of the direction of travel you have as a team. 
and you work to make sure that you've got a good brand with those people, you've got good relationships with those people. So when you've got a deal that needs to close on the last day of a quarter, you can call on those other teams and other departments where they may now need to uh, step up to the mantle and be helpful so that you can bring a deal to the finish line. Now, the last day, of course, is your Friday. So Fridays, I like to really encourage my sales leaders to focus on enablement, territory planning, and covering off any final admin as they wrap up the week. So starting that day with uh, enablement. Now, this might be where you have guest speakers come in. It might be where you have a focus session that's mainly based around uh, some form of topic that you know is thematic for your team, where you know that they're struggling, but you always want to kick off that day with some form of enablement. Then moving into territory planning, you want to make sure that your team and your field sellers are well set up so that when they come in on a Monday for their pipeline generation, they're well positioned to already know the accounts that they need to go after. They already know who they need to uh, who they need to prioritize in terms of tier one or tier two or tier three accounts. You don't want them to go into a Monday starting to think about who do I need to go after. You want them to do that planning and prep on a Friday so that Monday is just pure execution. It's pure outreach. And then the last part is really administration and your prep to make sure that you're also ready to go in on Monday firing on all cylinders Maybe throughout the week you've been slow in a particular regard or something hasn't panned out quite the way that you wanted it to. You can use that admin block on a Friday to fill in any gaps, do your research, go over your reports, look at your analytics and really start to think about what do I need to do to make sure when I come in on a Monday, I'm really set up and focused for success. The only other point that I haven't listed on here is that I often encourage frontline sales leaders to sometimes have a second one-to-one on a Thursday, which is focused more so on uh, specific enablement for their team. So as much as you do general enablement that's team-wide on a Friday, I often encourage a second one-to-one for 20 minutes on a Thursday to plug in any gaps on an individual basis for each of your reps. So maybe you have a rep who's you know, needs work on champion building and you have another one who needs support with building an ROI analysis, you can use those 20 minute sprints on a Thursday just to help to bridge that gap on a one-to-one basis versus doing team-wide enablement on a Friday. So it's two different things for two different reasons. I hope that this video has been helpful in some way. If so, please let me know in the comment section below. Let me know also what it would be helpful for me to cover in future videos. And I'll see you on the next one.